Good morning and good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us. It's my great pleasure to welcome you to our IRENA Project Navigator webinar today. For those of you who are not familiar with IRENA, we are an intergovernmental agency mandated by countries around the world to promote the widespread and sustainable use of all forms of renewable energy. Currently, IRENA has 140 members and 32 states in the process of becoming members. Before we begin, I'd like to share a quick note that IRENA does not endorse or recommend specific products or services shared within its webinar series. Information in this webinar is featured in the IRENA Renewable Energy Learning Partnership database as just one of many best practice case studies. If you're interested in finding out about future webinars offered through the IRENA webinar series or are interested in further renewable energy learning opportunities, please visit the IRENA Renewable Energy Learning Partnership website. For our webinar today, we have two options for listening in. You can connect by computer by selecting mic and speakers or by phone by selecting the telephone option in the right-hand panel. If you should face any technical difficulties during the webinar, please contact the GoToWebinar help desk at the number provided at the bottom of your screen. I'd like to encourage everyone to actively participate in our session today by asking questions. To do so, you can simply select the questions panel in the right-hand bar and enter your question with a note of who you would like the question directed to. We'll be collecting questions throughout the webinar. If you'd like to watch this webinar again or share it with a friend, we'll have a full recording available on the IROP website as well as on the IRENA YouTube channel. If we're not able to answer all of your questions during our session today and you wish to connect with our panelists, I encourage you to visit the IRENA community and join the Project Navigator discussion, which you can find under Featured Topics on the IRENA community website. We'll share this link and other information with you after the webinar. IRENA recently launched a Project Navigator, a platform to help develop renewable energy projects. Today's webinar is the first in the series of Project Navigator webinars, which will introduce the concept of the platform and its tools. The next webinar in the series will focus on the technical concept for solar PV utility scale projects and will be coming up in July. We invite you to join us for this next webinar. In our agenda today, I'll begin by introducing our five panelists and hand over the floor to them for the presentations, which will introduce us to the background, concept and objectives of the Project Navigator, as well as an intervention from ECRI on the project development and financing cooperation in the West African context. After a demonstration of the platform, we'll have a quick uh, question and answer session and a quick feedback at the very end to help us improve our webinar series. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce our panelists. Our first speaker is Dolph Gielen, Director of the IRENA Innovation and Technology Centre in Bonn. Dolph oversees the centre's work in advising member countries in the area of technology status and roadmaps, energy planning, costs, markets and innovative policy frameworks. Second, we'll hear from Roland Roche, Senior Program Officer for Renewable Energy Markets and Technology Dialogue at IRENA. Roland is the lead of IRENA's Renewable Energy Project Development Guideline, initiative known as the Project Navigator, as well as IRENA's work related to renewable energy, technology innovation, grids and storage. We're also very happy to be joined today by Nicola Bugatti from the ECAWA Center for Renewable Energy and Energy Efficiency, ECRI. Nicola is based in ECRI's headquarters in Praia Cap Verde, where he's currently coordinating project development and financing projects. Nicola has been involved in the collaboration between ECRI and IRENA on the Project Navigator. We will also hear from my colleague Carlos Ruiz, who is a junior professional associate working on the Project Navigator. Today, Carlos will introduce you to the large pool of project development information available on the Project Navigator and also demonstrate how it can be used to create more robust project proposals. Lastly, my name is Fungai Sendamu Guldeman. I will be your moderator for our session today, and I'll also briefly introduce you to how you can utilize the Project Navigator to find funding opportunities for renewable energy projects. I hope that you all enjoy the webinar, and with that, I'd like to hand the floor to our first speaker, Dolph Gielen, who will speak on the background and objectives of IRENA's Project Navigator. And the uh, development needs, project development needs in the different regions are quite varied, and with this uh, Project Navigator, we try to uh, address these uh, needs. The uh, the main development of the Navigator took place here in our uh, office in Bonn, the Arena Innovation and Technology Center, but uh, we've had important inputs also from our uh, colleagues in Abu Dhabi. And in fact, there is there are significant synergies between the Project Navigator and other uh, IRENA activities, such as there is the support for the 
Abu Dhabi Fund for Development. So there's $350 million available over a period of seven years to uh, facilitate uh, projects. And we're now in the, the, the second tranche has just been approved. We're now in, in the preparations for the third tranche. Uh, also, there is uh, there are important synergies what is called the uh, Project Facilitation Platform, and I think uh, Roland will say more about that in, uh, in a minute, and uh, also with various other uh, products, IRENA products on the side of capacity building and uh, on the side of, of uh, uh, learning. The uh, Project Development Challenge is that uh, most countries uh, are quite aware of their renewable energy potentials, but there is a gap to get from the realization that there is a potential to actual projects on the ground. And that is where we think the project navigator may be of use. Um, also, we see that uh, the um, policy environment and the general economic environment in countries varies greatly. For example, the, the cost of, of equipment and also the financing costs vary. And we think that the, the project navigator can provide some useful insights there that can help to, to reduce these uh, costs. Um, the, uh, the navigator has specific technology specific modules, but it also has now information on uh, grant facilities that can be accessed in order to develop uh, projects. So also financing uh, information. The uh, challenge of uh, renewable energy technology projects is to prove project bankability to funding institutions. And uh, there is a need for some basic information on project proposal development in terms of uh, development cost. Um, making this information available reduces then the cost of uh, also of project development. So that is another uh, advantage. So um, the, uh, at this moment, the project navigator covers uh, onshore wind and utility scale PV, but there is uh, a lot more to come. In the course of this year, there will be modules added on rooftop solar, on mini grid off grid, on bioenergy, and on small hydropower. And the ultimate goal is to cover all types of renewable energy technologies. Uh, so for example, in, in solar, so we cover the, the uh, very broad range of project sizes from uh, small uh, uh, use, small scale use by individual households to utility scale projects. And also we want to deepen uh, geographical detail. For example, we're considering development of an islands uh, module. Um, We've made an important step with making this tool now uh, publicly available. And the next step is further development of additional modules, but also actual deployment. And to date, we've had uh, two workshops. At the end of last year, we had a workshop in Cap Verde. And just the last week, uh, we had a workshop in Mongolia. And both were very well attended and well well received. So already we have received a number of additional country requests for similar activities. But of course, we welcome any further expressions of interest. And the best way to to start with that is just send us an, an email after this after this webinar if you're interested. So that includes that concludes my introduction and. Thank you very much. Yeah, my name is uh, Roland Rösch. I'm senior program, program officer at IRENA, and I worked the past years on the IRENA project navigator 
with uh, the Project Navigator team. And I like would like to introduce you, let's say, to the design and the basic principles of the Project Navigator. It's important to understand the basic principles of the Project Navigator so that you better understand what is, let's say, the when you use the tool, what you have to expect and the kind of what advantages the tool have and how it can guide you to successful deliver a renewable energy project implementation and also to improve the quality of a bankable proposal to get financing for such a proposal. I will give a, a short introduction, then I will give an overview of the process of the project development navigator, and then I will kind of introduce you to some tools we are using um, with the Project Navigator platform, and then I will kind of uh, give you an outlook what comes next and what we have else in the pipeline to make this a, a living tool that kind of uh, evolves and maybe improved over time. Next slide. Um, the uh, Dolph already introduced the objectives of the Project Navigator and the expectations of the IRENA member countries. But um, let's say what we have seen, and uh, let's say from member countries and uh, also project developers that developed uh, that developed renewable energy projects, is there was a lot of disappointment in the past by preparing a bankable proposal and then not coming to to let's say the implement to the implementation of a project and not really kind of receiving. Uh, finance, financial support for the project. And we looked uh, at IRENA into those uh, proposals and we find out that there is a, a basic misunderstanding of what needs to be done to prepare such a bankable proposal. Um, in general, uh, people, project developers in, in many countries, they have not the experience to develop uh, projects because in the past, let's say, with um, more, more centralized uh, energy structure. It were only a very few people who have the knowledge or who had the knowledge to develop uh, projects. And now with a more decentralized structure of renewable energies, more people need to know on how to develop renewable energy projects. And let's say why this is starting since a, since a few years, People do not know really what are the, the process steps and what is expected by the banks to, to finance such a, a project. And that's why we kind of um, took what we've learned from proposals that were rejected and from proposals which were successful, the essence to, to work out the project navigator. We also consulted, consult, have consulted with many experts that helped us to improve, to kind of develop the project navigator tool. And let's say in the past, there was a, a, a way in looking from a very technical perspective. So if there is a renewable energy potential and if there is a technical solution, um, people prepared or developer prepared a technical feasibility study, but then they missed several aspects, especially, let's say, the, the financial aspects, the economic aspects, and also the socioeconomic aspects, which are now covered with the IRENA project navigator. If you look... On the next slide with the uh, focal groups, let's say what are the focal groups for the IRENA project navigator. Um, of course, we would like to serve with the tool member countries. We would like to strengthen the skills and the capacities in member countries and how to develop renewable energy project. We also want to have a tool that can support the administration in member countries that accompanies the project development process on the, the side of mini, uh, the administration. We, of course, have a, a focus on small, medium-sized uh, entrepreneurs and engineering companies that have the capacity to develop renewable energy projects. We want to support them and to provide a platform where you can find all the information, all the contracts, all the tools one would need to develop the first time a renewable energy project to create a new jobs and uh, areas where, where people can kind of learn and develop successful renewable energy projects. 
Municipalities is one of our of our core groups we are focusing at in many places of the world in, in Latin America and Africa. Municipalities take now the step to develop and uh, renewable energy projects themselves. They want to have access to sustainable forms of energies. Why the municipality kind of took this decision, they also have a need to understand what needs to be done to get a best practice implementation for renewable energies and also, let's say, how to find partners and financiers for the project's ideas. And then also academia is a very important focus group for us. We want to to give, let's say, the project navigator and its materials to universities to help to build the skills and to build the capacity uh, for more people to, to develop renewable energy projects. We also thinking in cooperation with regional partners of setting up train the trainer centers where we can use the tools and the materials to train project developers on the ground to deliver renewable energy projects. Then last but not least, of course, the financing sector is a very important stakeholder of the IRENA project navigator. In discussions we had with the finance sector, we learned that they very much appreciate uh, the, the, the uh, IRENA project navigator as a tool that improves the quality of proposals for renewable energies. That helps the financing institution to save uh, time and capacities to deal with uh, relevant project proposals and, and, and a, a higher quality of project proposals, which kind of saves time and, and money on their side as well. Then um, to come to the IRENA project navigators uh, dimensions, um, this is really a tool that has a technical dimension. Um, let's say usually people think to get financing for a renewable energy project is a commercial or is a, a financial issue, but indeed is in the, in the most, in the most projects, the engineers have the lead to be prepare a renewable energy projects and they are the ones that uh, prepare the bankable proposal as well. And uh, let's say to take all technical aspects under consideration, to put all the assumptions and to put all the concepts together to convince a financing in institution is a technical matter. And that's why we are cooperating with consultant and engineering companies to gain and to bring together their experience they had as bankable, as a, a kind of uh, owner engineers or banker engineers to bring in their expertise into the financial navigator and, and bringing the understanding into the tool, what is needed and what is expected by the banks on the technical side to deliver a successful and bankable project. Of course, the tool as it is uh, now at the moment, we are uh, have a very generic tool that kind of fits a global context, which covers all types types of renewable energy technologies, at least at the end of a uh, work program 1415 of IRENA. But let's say IRENA is a global organization and we cannot kind of deal with the, con with the context of renewable energy projects and the financing situation and the special environment for renewable energy technologies in all the countries equally. And that's why we have to join forces with ongoing region, regional um, partners and we, we join up with those uh, regional partners to do regional adaptations of, of the tool to use it in a better context and to provide country-specific uh, information that improves the tool, let's say, in a country or region-specific context. Also, with the funds, we try to provide uh, funds which look on grants and loans, but on a ver very global scale for the time being, we have the kind of most global funds for multinational development banks and national development banks in the tool, but also we want to bring in more local banks and funds that are available only regional, but with the, for this we join 
uh, the forces with, with ongoing and similar initiatives in the regions and in the country. Um, um, Nicola Bugatti from ECRE will kind of introduce such a kind of regional cooperation IRENA has on the project Navigator for West Africa. On the potential for renewable energy technology projects, um, as I uh, outlined briefly, usually people think uh, renewable energy project development is mainly uh, about delivering the right technology on uh, with the right uh, on the right physical potential to deliver a successful project but let's say the commercial and economic and political aspects of course are very important to deliver a successful project also the socio-economic potential of the project is important and the project navigator deals with all these potentials to make sure that you systematically go through these potentials, that you deal with all aspects of these potentials, to make sure that you don't miss anything out, which may lead to a situation that your project derails. And let's say if you look into the statistics why a renewable energy project may fail, it is hardly the case that this is a technical reason. It is hardly the case that this is for commercial reasons. It's very often the case that the socioeconomic potential of a project is underestimated because uh, certain stakeholders were not onboarded um, on the project uh, in the right time to, to get a buy-in from stakeholders to support the projects. And the project navigator takes this into consideration. Um, in the next slide, I just would like briefly to mention uh, the, the value you create with a renewable energy project over the process uh, we have uh, developed with the project navigator. Uh, the value is increasing over time. And let's say when you reach the level of development, so the development level is when you put all the contracts, the land lease contract, the fuel supply contract, the power purchase agreement, the loan contract, the partnership contract together, you reach a, a very high level of value which you can harvest when you sell off the project to an investor. And till this stage, uh, the, the value creating phase is from identify to development. This is the area where you increase the value of your project. And I, the point I want to make, make here, if you select in the early phases uh, of the project navigator a poor project, it will remain a poor project even if you find the best technology and even if you find the best uh, IPC contractor in the world to deliver your project, a project which was poor selected and was not pre well prepared in the early stages will remain a poor project. And that means in the early stages of the project, you have to work very thoroughly and to look in all aspects that you are able to deliver a, a good project with a very high value and this is kind of also the expectation of the banks because the high value of the projects guarantees you high cash flows and the cash flows are the basis for getting from private bank loans but also the multinational development banks and the national development banks have an understanding of sustainability that requires that the project is kind of also creating continuously value. And that's, that's why you have to follow those process steps. In the next uh, step, you see the, the principle of front end loading. Here you see two coast curves. And I think we take advantage in the project navigator of those coast curves. For example, the red line shows that uh, the costs of a project increase over the lifetime of the project. And that means if you find out the, the main uh, problems and the challenges of the projects in the early phase, this creates very low costs for you. Why, for example, only one person is working with the project navigator and the information available in um, the web to prepare your project proposal. So the costs are low at the beginning, but at the end of the project, when you are close to the financial investment decision, you need experts, lawyers, consultants, and those people kind of uh, have really high expectations regarding their, their payments. And why you kind of involve those people in the project, you have to be sure that your project will be delivered at the end. And in this sense, it's also very important 
that you understand that the potential to influence the costs in the project happens very much at the beginning, at the start of the projects. For example, if you find out at the beginning that a pro certain project site uh, is not easy to connect to the grid, you may have the opportunity to choose a site which is closer and has better conditions for grid connection in an early stage. So you have saved a lot of costs in the early phase of the project. When you find out the same, um, that you cannot connect your grid, uh, your renewable energy project to the grid easy, easily at a later stage of the project, this may cause very high costs. Um, when you find out this, when the, 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 the project is already uh, kind of uh, implemented or at least partly constructed. So this principle we take into account in the project navigator. Uh, in the process overview, we lead you stepwise with uh, different tools to improve the value over the project like lifetime. And then, of course, we also kind of encourage you all the time to check with, with the questions that you have done everything in each project steps before you go to the next step. And then we, at least in the first three project steps, we encourage you not to only look into one project alternative, we encourage you to, to, to look into more than one project alternative to really have the opportunity to select the project, the best project opportunity to make sure that you use uh, in an efficient way the funds you have available. And um, yeah, then we look also in the project development process in X aspects that come from the operation and the de decommissioning of the projects. Because while you are developing a project, also the operation and the decommissioning of the project is a cost and has cost aspects which needs to be considered in the project development process. Um, just uh, regarding the specific tools, I, I would like to encourage you to kind of find out yourself what kind of tools we have in the uh, prepare your project uh, section of the project IRENA Navigator. I would just to mention uh, three or four of them. I think the identification checklist for the identification of a renewable energy project is very valuable because it, it shows many aspects. You probably, um, let's say if you are not experienced to develop a renewable energy project, you would not consider it from yourself. And that's why it is very important to look at this checklist and to check if you have a project idea, if your project fulfill all criteria of this identification checklists. We encourage you to develop and start to develop more than one project. And then we kind of help you to compare all the time the different projects and alternatives you have in front of you to make then a proper selection with a, with the scoring tests of what is the best pro project you have in the pipeline. Also very important, and I encourage you to do this test, there is a self-coring test, which gives you, uh, let's say, a, a realistic view about your skills and, let's say, what skills you are missing to develop a renewable energy project. This is very important to, let's say, bring the expectation to deliver a best practice renewable energy project and to get it financed, to bring this into the line with your skills and if you are missing some skills then we kind of encourage you to find partners that can join your your project development process to make sure that you end at the end of the day deliver what you what you expect from from this process um, i would like to to briefly explain that we have centered all aspects you find in the project navigator and in the technical concepts. So we look into the, the macro environment of the country, uh, in the, into the GDP, into in inflation rate of a country. We deal with the circumstance of the energy markets and the competition you have from other energy sources. We look then into the micro environment and let's say who are the main players, what kind of partner do you need and what competition you may face by developing your project. And then it goes down to technical factors, logistical factor and also the cost, cost of your renewable energy project to make sure that all this 
aspects enter into a discounted cash flow model which basically deliver the it shows which cash flows you can expect from your projects and what the value of your project will be so that you can make sure uh, you have something in your hand that will also be convincing for the banks the current status of the project navigator adolf already explained that we will have the photovoltaic technical concept soon um, we actually planning to have uh, in about two months time another webinar about photovoltaic technical concept and um, uh, utility scale uh, solar project development we are working uh, we have a wind energy project already online which you can use and we will also do a webinar in a later stage regarding wind energy project development we are currently f looking for a consultant that helps us with rooftop solar plug and play systems and also mini grid uh, will be um, a thing that we are working on in the next ones we have partners which we, we are working uh, on mini grid applications bioenergy and small hydro and we are continuously kind of doing workshops now we try to have in different regions of the world every two months a workshop to outreach and to train people in how to use the tool and let's say even more important we want to learn from project developers uh, uh, about the tool and how we can improve it to have it better adapted to the the country and to the regions together with partners to make sure that people really can take advantage of all the information we provide with the IRENA project navigator. Um, I think it, it's very important for us to, to find partners, to find experts, to have a continuous dialogue to improve over the coming years this tool. And I would like to introduce you to Nicola Bugatti, a colleague I, I worked with in the context of a workshop we did for West Africa and small island development states in uh, Capo Verde in September. And he would like to give you the, the perspectives of the IRENA project navigator in the context of West African countries. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Roland. Uh, let me first, first of all uh, thanks, uh, thank IRENA colleagues for the invitation to be here today. And of course, congratulate them for the outstanding results uh, that they are achieving uh, with the Project Navigator. Uh, today I'm going to talk, um, as uh, Roland was introducing, about the joint uh, ICRI IRENA experience in um, adapting and using the Project Navigator in the context of West Africa. Uh, next slide, please. Um, first of all, I would like to uh, introduce uh, uh, ICRI as, uh, an uh, as an institution. Uh, I, okay, and so ICRI um, is um, the ECOWA Center for Renewable Energy and Energy Efficiency. Um, in the map, uh, in this slide, you can see um, when we talk about the, the ECOWAS, so the Economic Community for West African States, uh, the countries that we are talking about, so um, all the coastal countries from Senegal to Nigeria, and then Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso, and of course Cabo Verde, where um, the Secretariat of um, ICRI is based, and from where I am uh, talking today. Um, so ICRI was established in 2008 by the ECOWAS Council of Ministers, uh, with a mandate to promote renewable energy and energy efficiency markets. Uh, as we said, the Secretariat is here in Cabo Verde, and we have um, a network of national focal institutions in all the ECOWAS countries. Um, the center was uh, established in 2010, um, and uh, uh, of course we have to uh, acknowledge here the uh, support of core par partners like uh, uh, the government of Cabo Verde, UNIDO, and the Austrian Development Agency and the Sp Spanish Development Agency. Um, finally, just to uh, highlight that ICRI was appointed 
they, by the ECOWAS Energy Minister, as this as for all focal point for, for West Africa. Uh, next uh, slide, please. Um, so after this uh, uh, short um, introduction, um, I would like to enter a bit more uh, in the description of um, what we have done uh, together with Irina in the Project Navigator. Uh, so the first uh, uh, thing I would like to highlight here is that in the ECOWAS region there are currently almost 7 gigawatt of renewable energy projects under consideration and as we can see uh, in, the, in the graph that we have included in this slide. Um, of course, um, not all the projects uh, are um, close uh, to bankability uh, and the, from the project development and financing program uh, of ICRI, uh, of course on top of keeping track of this pipeline of projects, uh, we also provide technical, legal and economical assistance to private and public promoters uh, as well as utility, ministries and regulators. And, and is in, this, in the framework of this uh, daily engagement with uh, the promoter uh, that we uh, observe the challenges that uh, project developers face um, to get their project close to uh, implementation. Uh, we can talk about, of course, policy challenges. In some cases, the enabling environment um, is, uh, is still a challenge. Uh, but, of course, um, there are other challenges related with finance and, and with the capacity itself uh, of the promoters. And for uh, these reasons, in order to um, mitigate those challenges is that since the very beginning of, uh, and this date backs to uh, the assembly of IRENA in January 2014, uh, ICRI has expressed uh, its maximum uh, interest uh, and immediate engagement to collaborate uh, with IRENA on the project navigator. Um, and uh, uh, it was mentioned before, uh, last year in September, uh, we conducted jointly uh, the first uh, workshop um, on Project Navigator that was uh, here in Cabo Verde, uh, which is uh, both a country, of course, of ECOWAS, but also a country um, of, uh, which belongs to the network of uh, small island development states. Um, and it was uh, an excellent three days um, workshop um, getting together private sector, public sector, regulators uh, to discuss about these challenges that we have just uh, mentioned and to see, uh, of course, to present the tool and to see how this uh, uh, tool could uh, be useful in, uh, in supporting the development of renewable energy projects in the region. Uh, next uh, slides, please. Um, and of course, this collaboration um, between Irina and ICRI, um, aiming at uh, supporting uh, project, develop, um, project developers to get uh, uh, more projects online, um, continues. Um, and uh, we have, uh, uh, of course, uh, many excellent outcomes of uh, uh, the national workshop conducted in Cabo Verde last year uh, that we are following up. So, for instance, there is uh, the support to the Ministry of Energy in the auction process that they uh, should be launching uh, soon, as well, as well the idea of supporting in the formulation of uh, PPA template for these uh, tenders and for, so for further development. And uh, I'm glad uh, that some uh, of a suggestion which came out of, um, of a workshop in terms of uh, a new technical concept to uh, be included in the project navigator such as this uh, small uh, PV installation uh, is, um, is in the 2015 work plan of uh, that Roland uh, just described. So uh, this is also an excellent result of, uh, of the workshop in, in Cabo Verde. Uh, we are currently developing the concept note uh, of a new 
national workshop uh, to the second to be conducted here in the Ecowas region and is most likely going to be in Ghana and it will happen before the end of the year. And also uh, we are jointly working, uh, Irina and Ikri, in develop uh, uh, the concept of uh, a training of trainers um, to uh, promote really the uh, project navigator as a capacity building tool um, for project promoters in West Africa. So the vision, um, we have already conducted this kind of uh, uh, regional training of trainers uh, activities before, and we believe that uh, project navigator could be the next uh, success in, in this sense. And hopefully we would like to start also with this activity before the end uh, of a year. Uh, and finally, um, something that uh, uh, Roland stressed before, uh, the importance of uh, uh, making both project and financial navigator as much as possible um, country and regional specific. Uh, and here is where uh, we really see uh, the added value of uh, this collaboration, where each organization is bringing to the table uh, the best of its, uh, of its skills. And the concrete example that we are working now is to include inside the financial navigator uh, not only uh, the global funds that Roland was mentioning previously, but also local and, and regional banks. Um, with this, uh, I have uh, concluded my intervention. I look forward, of course, to continue the collaboration with Irina and also to the Q&A session in case any um, question on my intervention arise. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Nicola. Um, I'd like now to hand the floor over to Carl. Hello, um, my name is Carlos Ruiz. Uh, I, I work for IRENA on the Project Navigator uh, here at the Innovation and Technology Center in Bonn. And uh, I will be presenting the, the Project Navigator platform and explaining how to use it. The Project Navigator can be found at the URL you see on top of the screen, uh, which is irena.org slash navigator. Uh, this is the landing page, which is the first thing that you will see when you access the URL. Uh, in order to gain access to the to the content of the Navigator, you will need to register where, it's, where it says register and it's highlighted right now. Uh, and this will take you to the registration form where we we ask you to fill in some basic details and uh, as soon as you create your account you will get an activation email which will allow you to access the navigator uh, once you activate your account and and you and you sign in this is what you will see this is the navigator homepage. Uh, the first thing that i want to highlight is the navigation bar which allows users to switch between different sections throughout the entire website so no matter which web page you are in, you can always move to the to another section. The second part is the new section, which shows the latest developments uh, on the project navigator, like uh, new content additions and uh, upcoming events. And uh, finally, the the three boxes you see at the bottom are the the three main elements the three main elements of the navigator. So first is the learning section which is a, a large repository of knowledge, uh, tools, templates, examples, uh, best practices, and they are all aimed at strengthening the user's uh, project development skills. Next is the, the start a project section, which users can access, uh, they, where they can access their own personal work, workspace and they can start developing and tracking their, their own project by using the tools that we provide and following a, a clear and, and systematic process. And finally, the last component is the, the financial navigator, which contains a database of relevant funding options. And these options can be filtered by, depending on the on, on project specific conditions. Um, I will start by explaining the, the learning section. This section is broken down into three main parts. The first one is the the project development guidelines, which provide general information on project planning. And we try to explain the, the, 
the methodology that we suggest, as well as the different tools and templates that the user can access. Uh, if we go into this section, users can get a clear view of the proposed project development phases and directly access any of them by, by, by clicking directly on them. If we go into the assessment phase, for example, uh, you can see how the how we structure each of the phases. So first we define the phase and its objectives. We list the tools that are available for each phase. We suggest key actions, control questions, and, and possible deliverables. If we go for one of the tools, for example, the critical path method, uh, you can see that a brief explanation is included. And it's very important that we have this this uh, bar on the right, which is called the, the How Others Did It section, where you can download the examples uh, which come from our case studies so that you, you can know more or less how, how these tools are supposed to be used. Um, this is this is one of the examples, for example. If we go back to the project development phase, uh, I'd like to show you another very important part of the navigator, which is inside the development phase, and these are the contracts. Uh, here you can find a, an overview of different contracts. For example, the PPA, the PPA, uh, the EPC, the o &M agreements. And uh, if we go, for example, into the power purchase agreement, we we try to describe the importance of of this contract to the project, and a very important part is also that if you scroll to the bottom of the page, you will find uh, a library of examples and uh, templates which are available on the internet. So I'm going to go back to the learning section to continue explaining the other components. Um, the second part, and this is also a very important part, are the technical guidelines, which cover specific technology specific aspects of project development. And uh, so far we have the onshore wind uh, project guidelines on the website. However, we are finalizing uh, guidelines for utility scale PV projects. And of course more are to come. We already have uh, residential PV, uh, mini grid and off grid applications, small hydro and bioenergy guidelines in the pipeline. Um, this is what you will find inside the, the, the onshore wind guidelines. And uh, as you can see, we cover different, different topics which go from standards to risk evaluation processes and uh, topics related to site and resource assessment, uh, technology and logistics of, of a project. This is an example. This is a small excerpt taken from the, our sections on land cover and topography for wind projects. And, uh, Yes, let's move on to the last part of the of the learning section, how others did it. This is basically where you can find the, the library of all the examples and case studies that we have prepared until now. Uh, I would like to highlight that the Navigator is continuously being developed and uh, new content will be added frequently. So we are always looking for pilot projects on which we could apply our methodology and then later feature on the platform. Uh, if we move to the second main section of the navigator, which is called uh, start a project, uh, this is where users can start their own, their own project. Uh, first, they would need to fill out some basic information. And after they do this, uh, the project would appear on the bottom of the screen. Uh, and through here, p users will be able to access the workspace. Within the workspace, users can follow the, the proposed development process. Uh, access interactive tools, track their progress, and easily export, export their files so that they can later use them for their own proposals. Uh, this is one of the examples that we have on the Navigator. This is just a SWOT analysis. It's very simple, but you can basically export different, uh, different templates from, from this section. Uh, if we go, for example, into the first, into the first phase, uh, which is the identification phase. To get here, you just click directly where it says identification phase. Uh, you can see that we have, again, a summary, like a small definition and objectives of the, of the phase, as well as the tools that uh, we contain in this, that are contained within this, this uh, single phase. 
in this case, it's an identification checklist, which you can just fill out and, and save within your project workspace. Uh, one a user is done through a whole phase, then they can move on and they, they can try to move on to the next phase. And for this, we have some control questions which uh, developers have to answer just to make sure that uh, all the relevant aspects have been considered and uh, important issues have not been overlooked before moving on to the next phase. Uh, this process that I just described should be applied on, on all phases. And uh, finally comes the, the financial navigator, which will be explained by my colleague, Fungai. So thank you. All right, thanks, Carlos. So as just explained by Carlos, um, the financial navigator okay. is the last uh, integral part of the project navigator. Basically what it is, is uh, an online database of funds that are actively providing finance to renewable energy technology pro projects. Um, the Financial Navigator is an important support instrument because widespread develop deployment of renewable energy depends very much on the availability of financing. However, um, it's apparent that securing financial backing is a major challenge in the development of renewable energy projects. The Financial Navigator is a country and uh, project-specific support instrument that can help developers overcome this hurdle by connecting renewable energy projects with the available finance through a transparent database that can define the funding opportunities, the respective institutions, and also the banks that can serve the project-specific demands and framework. So how does it work? Basically, uh, looking at the, the profile in front of you, users can immediately start to search for sources of capital by using a range of search options that include technology type. You see here solar power and uh, photovoltaic, and they can also search and filter their results by geographic region. Alternatively, users can also browse through the specific institutions in the, in the database, which now actually includes uh, 31 entries. Funds in the database have been collected in cooperation with partners like ECRI, and we are currently and continuously in the, in the process of adding more funds that incorporate a larger scope of regional funds in order to improve the information that's currently available. On this point, I would also like to mention that IRENA is currently in the implementation phase of what's known as the Project Facilitation Platform. Uh, this is intended to be a virtual marketplace and facilitation platform for renewable energy projects in eastern and southern African countries. It's planned that the core of the platform will be an internet-based internet marketplace where relevant market players like project owners, financiers, and uh, service and technology providers can become more visible for other market players and screen the market themselves. So in the detailed view of each fund, after locating relevant finance providers, users can move on uh, to use the individual entries to view more detailed information. This can include um, uh, initiating uh, uh, contact with the financiers themselves. This is up to the project developers themselves. Each entry in the database also provides up-to-date information on the details of the respective funds. And uh, these details can vary depending on the respective energy technologies and the different regions. In addition to general information on the fund, information is also in available on the geographical coverage of the fund, the size or scope of the fund, uh, the technologies that are financed, the size of the financial support available, as well as you know uh, the type of financing provided that is grant, equity, or loan financing. The Financial Navigator also allows uh, users themselves to access funding concept details, including contact information of projects currently under development, as well as projects with uh, similar criteria. Each fund entry also informs on the requirements, such as the documents that need to be prepared, depending on project specifications. Uh, it provides recommendations, tips, and past, ca past case study examples as well. So to conclude, we aim to see improved transparency of funding opportunities through the development of more realistic financing approaches, as well as a more effective deployment of specific renewable energy technology project financing information. And with that, we've come to the end of our presentations.
I would like to thank all of our panelists again for an excellent presentation. And uh, now I will open the floor to questions. Okay, so the first question that we have received is for Dolph. Uh, on the question of the challenge of renewable energy technology projects, how can we overcome this point and prove the bankability to funding institutions? That is a uh, very uh, interesting question. Um, the, um, I mean, the, 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 there's a number of, of, of uh, important aspects that an, an, uh, a bank will, will look for. Uh, for example, an important component is how secure uh, is the uh, source of income that is uh, foreseen uh, for the project. And uh, what are technology risks? What are political risks? What are uh, exchange rate risks? And then, uh, of course, what, what is the uh, balance of uh, equity and various types of, of uh, loans for the specific uh, project? So all of that needs to be clear uh and 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 uh these risks must be manageable before a bank will consider uh, um a loan or and before an investor will will uh, uh uh decide that an investment is is worthwhile so and all of that all of these aspects can be covered through the project uh, navigator thank you Dolph. the next question we have received is for roland Roland, uh, the question goes as forth. Which are the factors that influence the curves presented in slide 24? For instance, in the selection phase, how can you explain the curve trend of a good proposal? <clears throat> I think, of course, this is a, you cannot really take this as a quantitative uh, curve. But indeed, let's say, when you start uh, with a project and you have to, the idea so let's say if you have an idea about a project, this has not really a value. You cannot not sell it to somebody or it, it, it also, let's say, very often you see that uh, I, people have an idea regarding a, a renewable energy project. Then they write it on a, on a, as a one pager and then they go and try to find partners. And let's say why uh, professional project developers or also bankers know that the way from a project idea to implementation is very long. They have a lot, a long list of questions and things they come up with, which goes far beyond the, the only, the, only the project idea. And let's say if you are able to systematically go through the checklist we provide to you, you can kind of pick one box after the other to check certain things. And if you then go to somebody who is probably interested in giving his equity to your project, then you can come up with a, with a more thorough analysis and saying, okay, I looked and I evaluated the source of, of this site. I, I checked the possibility to connect a, a possible renewable energy plant to the grid. I already kind of had preliminary discussions and uh, the landowner probably signed a memorandum of understanding to give me a land lease contract. So as more of those things you bring and of more, more of those things you have checked, as more the value of the project increases. And then in the selection phase, you have to kind of really charge your projects against other alternatives, which can kind of create additional value. But then really the phase when you create value and, and when the project has a value is when you have the bundle of contracts you need to implement and to construct the project. If you have all those contract signs, and let's say amongst them, that you need a grid connection contract, you need a fuel supply contract, you need a land lease contract, for example, with the farmer, you need uh, a kind of uh, operation, uh, operation and maintenance contract, and you, you need to have a, a preliminary discussion and you need to get an EPC contract signed with a manufacturer uh, and, and, and all these things kind of create value. And once you have this bunch of contracts, you can go to somebody who is interested to invest directly with equity in your project 
or you can go to a bank and the bank will check all the single terms and conditions of your contracts and they will be able to give a value to your contract and if you have a power purchase agreements which defines you based on a price formula a certain price for 20 years and if you have a, a good contract for the procurement of a, of a wind turbine or whatever renewable energy technologies and an O&M contract, the bank and also investors are able to judge this and then you, they will be able to give you exactly what is the value of those contracts you have for investment. And this is, let's say, the explanation of this curve. And let's say there are two important um, or three points which you have to take into consideration to say just the idea and having it on a paper written a, a few bullets is not worth a lot. You need to check certain uh, circumstances and, and certain environments around your project that increases the value already to find a partner. And then the, really the value in the project is there and is also that you can harvest this value once you have really contract signs signed. And, and this is the idea of this graph. Thanks, Roland. Uh, the next question we have, um, have project developers and representatives of financing institutions been involved in the development of the project navigator as users will themselves be supported by the project uh, navigator in developing bankable projects? Um, yes, we are in a dialogue with, with, with private bank and also development banks. Let's say, for example, um, Nicola Bugatti introduced uh, the workshop in Capo Verde we had, and we had several representatives from, from multinational uh, banks there and also from private banks in, in Africa and also kind of really small local banks, and they shared their views with us on the Project Navigator. I also participated in uh, events of uh, financing institutions uh, during the uh, uh, Vienna Energy Week and I presented the proposal there and I received some feedback and we also shared uh, the, the documents and the guidelines with finance experts and, and we received feedback. Um, I'm, let's say I'm aware that we can kind of uh, improve uh, uh, the content coming from the financing side. But on the other hand, I also would, li would, would like to say um, it is not feasible to kind of set a standard. So that would be a, a far too high expectations because the expectations of the different banks and what is required by a bank differs a lot between the region, between the different banks, and also kind of structurally what kind of bank it is. If it is a private bank, if it is a, a, a multinational development bank, they all have different uh, structures. And uh, it's, it's, let's say, kind of very important to have a basic understanding, but it will not be possible to meet a standard here to, for example, to develop a financial model which will be accepted by all banks. So I think this will not be possible, but it's, of course, very important to stay in touch with the banks and to maintain and to receive more feedbacks from banks to improve the tool, because this at the end of the day is important because you have two sides. You have the project developer on the one side and you have the financier on the other side and that those kind of parties understand each other well and to maintain this dialogue between the banks and the developers is uh, the, one of the approaches of the project navigator to, to meet, let's say, both sides and, and, and to develop tools that also fulfill the requirements of the banks. So we, we are always happy to get more feedback and input. Um, the next uh, couple of questions are for Carlos. They have to do with... Uh, the other different kinds of technologies, when will they be online? For example, one question goes, um, when will utility scale PV or CSP and solar technical guidelines be available online? And uh, also, will bioenergy information, including biomass and waste to energy systems, in particular gasification systems, be also included? Uh, yes, uh, regarding the utility scale PV guidelines, uh, we are actually finalizing and they should be online soon. This means, uh, I don't know, in the next couple of months probably. And uh, regarding the, the biomass, uh, 
and the bioenergy technologies. We are working on defining the scope of these uh, guidelines. And uh, for now, uh, gasif therm thermal gasification is, is in the scope. Uh, we hope that we can have this finalized by the end of the year. I, I think just to, to, to jump in, um, I think we are in, in let's say, the, the things which are really under preparation and which I for sure will have online till the end of our work program 2014-15 is wind is already there. Let's say I think we are now um, finalizing and integrating into the navigator the, cons the, the utility scale photovoltaic. We will very closely and, and for sure now procure and select a consultant for the rooftop plug and play systems and for the, the mini grid off grid systems. And uh, now with the partner partners, we are working on bioenergy and we also will integrate from a partner in Japan, a small hydro technical concept. Uh, which they already prepared and, and we, this is ready for use, but it needs to be uh, kind of integrated into the project navigator. And then let's say it's a matter of, of capacity uh, we have on board for the moment, but I expect that we can start before the end of the year also a technical concept for geothermal, which uh, is a thing which uh, really is required for many member countries and saying there is not so much experience on the ground in how to develop uh, geothermal projects and let's say to find an expert in the places of the world that have experience with geothermal and let's say to bring this knowledge and experience into the project navigator process and to give guidance to interested member countries is, is uh, what we will do till the end of the year. If this will be online before the end of the year, I'm, I'm not sure to, to promise this one. Thanks, Roland. Um, so this is for Roland and Dolph. How is the navigator being linked to other project preparation activities, such as the ADB, uh, the IF IFC and also the international su support system for infrastructure. Well, it's um, we're having a good dialogue with the various uh, international financing institutions on uh, what their needs are. Um, we're also aware that um, a number of similar types of of activities. Uh, uh, similar types of platforms have been developed in, in the past. And what is clear is that uh, emphasis must be on utility for the users. And uh, to achieve that, it's key to uh, focus on the actual application and to refine it based on the needs that emerge. And that's right now uh, where we are uh, focusing. And as uh, Roland already uh, explained, the, uh, the focus is not only on these international financial institutions, it's broader. We're working with, uh, uh, with commercial banks, large banks, small banks. Uh, we're working with uh, project developers and uh, through and, and policy makers and through this, this uh, let's say, this, this differentiated approach, we hope to come to, to a product which maximizes benefit to the user and provides the necessary information to the financi financiers. Um, maybe I, I, let's say, in, also in, in terms of, let's say, cooperating and how we would like to, to bring this into other contexts, let's say, for the time being, we have been very much involved in the technical preparation of this tool. So this is really challenging also in terms of having the IT ready, making the tool work, um, all these processes which are not related to the content. And let's say uh, once we are able to release more capacities to work on the content, we, we are kind of have in mind for the coming years, to kind of basically to improve the tool and to enter into more cooperations and, and to work closer with all kind of uh, institutions, finance institutions, member countries, also other associations and organizations to bring uh, existing content together. And I think a very important 
point is, let's say that the project navigator tool is not a tool that is invented and created by Arena with con Arena content only. It is basically the, the, the idea to bring existing content together. So one of the discussions we had with, with project developers in developing countries, they said, yeah, we would have very much appreciated such a tool as the final, as the navigator, uh, because when I did, did a project development in Mexico, so that was the reference and we had some other references like this, it was very challenging for me to find all this information uh, with Google and in the net to prepare a bankable proposal. Basically, it took me five years and uh, I, I did a lot of things wrong. And let's say the, the initiative of the Project Navigator is, let's say, to link information together. So let's say uh, information we have at IRENA with the Global Atlas, with Remap, with uh, let's say also we have information on how to do wind measurements and many others. But we also work together with the Pacific Power Association, with uh, CARILEC, uh, with CARICOM. They have a lot of information available on how to do renewable energy project development and to use and to link this information together and to systematize it for project developers that they find it is very important. And I also think it's not important that a certain fund is in the financial navigator. It is important that via the financial navigator, you find the link you need to find the, the source you are looking for to be able to do the right thing. And, and this is the, the idea of, of the initiative of the project navigator. Otherwise, we would not be able to deliver this because it would be then way too complex. Thank you, Roland. Uh, we have uh, time for one more question. We've had a couple in uh, questions about workshops. Uh, in particular, you mentioned uh, a workshop in, in uh, Cap Verde with ECRI. When do you plan to um, organize other workshops, uh, for example, in the MENA region? And uh, how can partners get involved in the workshops or contributing to the uh, financial database, for example? So let's say we are kind of uh, investigating, of course, together with member countries and people we have met uh, in the IRENA events, like uh, in the assembly and the council. Um, and of course, let's say every member country is open to make a proposal for a workshop. I think we, we are open to do this. Uh, I think a few workshops are already more or less a little bit more more advanced, so as, as presented by Nicola Bugatti, the, the one we want to do in West Africa. We are also in discussions with, with countries in, in South Africa and in the, in the African Clean Energy Corridor region. And uh, let's say the way to do this, I think, um, is to contact the IRENA focal point in the country to mention that using the IRENA Project Navigator is an interesting tool uh, that can be used in the context of your country. And then the Project Navig the project, uh, uh, the IRENA Focal Point will be the entry point to IRENA to propose a, a Project Navigator workshop in the country. Let's say what we expect from um, such a workshop is we need a local partner so in the in the ca case of Cap Verde, that was ECRE. In the case of Mongolia, that was the Energy Ministry of Mongolia and the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, we need such a local partner, let's say, to bring the right people together. So we are focusing on people who currently work in the ministries, in the administration, on kind of processing renewable energy pro projects in the administrative process, but also kind of small, medium-sized enterprises, consultants, people who have an uh, engineering background and think to, to kind of use uh, the existing potential and the, the framework, the political framework and the regulatory framework in the country to develop a renewable energy project is the kind type of people we are looking for that we can really kind of build on their capacity, on their knowledge, on their on, on their networks and experience in the ground to support them specifically uh, on their project ideas to develop projects on the ground and to get also successfully financing for renewable energy projects. So we we very open and this is the 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 part, big part of our work in the coming years really to to 
put specific content into the tool that can be used in all the countries and regions, also in the MENA region. So that would be a very important region for us. And then, let's say, to partner and, and to, to connect uh, yeah, the, the relevant information to the people who need this on the ground. And we, we also kind of, uh, as Carlos already mentioned, and also Dolph, we are still open uh, to proposals for pilot projects. Also, clearly, you need to, uh, approval by the ARENA focal point, but then we would be happy, let's say, also to, to look into uh, projects that are already under, under development to help to get finance and to support and strengthen the quality of those projects. Thanks, Roland. Um, maybe a very last question for you and Dolph. Um, are you considering enhanced geothermal projects as an additional technical concept? And uh, would you also consider working with project developers on such uh, concepts? Okay. Um, but for, for geothermal, uh, we, we have another initiative which is called the uh, Global Geothermal Alliance, which is currently taking off. Uh, but let's say that's more focused on um, high-quality geothermal resources, relatively shallow resources. Um, enhanced geothermal systems is, is a um, relatively new technology. It's still mostly at a demonstration stage. And I would say that is not the primary focus of the navigator such emerging technologies because there are very specific issues uh, uh, to be considered. And of course, we're happy to uh, assist in the, uh, in the further uh, development of this technology. And, uh, but then probably an, an, a different approach is more suited and we would need to, to discuss bilaterally how that could happen. Thank you very much, Dolph. Uh, thank you again to all of our panelists. Unfortunately, that's all the time that we have available for questions today. If uh, there's a question that was not answered that you posted, we'll be able to connect with all of our panelists through the IRENA community at irena.org slash community. Here you'll be able to find the discussion forum for this webinar under featured topics. And uh, before we conclude today, I'd like to ask you to answer a very short survey about today's webinar in order for us to help uh, improve our webinar series. You'll see four questions pop up on your screen and you simply need to select your choice. Thank you very much for your feedback. Thank you very much for your feedback. If you should wish to get in touch with us, uh, please email us on navigator at irena.org. And uh, we invite you now to start your own project at irena.org slash navigator. Have a good day. Still on there?